welcome to New Hampshire's Wild Side. I'm Christina Lupe. And I'm Mark Beauchamp. We'll take you behind the scenes of the New Hampshire Fishing Game Department to learn more about the people and projects of your Fish and Wildlife Agency. We'll also give you tips and tactics that you can use to make the most out of your time in New Hampshire's woods and waters. And along the way, we'll meet real people who love life outdoors. Now, let's discover more about New Hampshire's Wild Side. How much ice do we need here to make it safe to go out? Eight inches. I got involved with Fish and Game Let's Go Fishing because I went to um, New Hampshire Becoming an Outdoors Woman program and met all kinds of people that like what I like to do and um, then they were talking about all the different programs that are offered for kids and as a teacher I thought it would be great to introduce kids to some of the outdoors um, programs that New Hampshire offers and I love to fish so why not pass that along. How would you set your depth on this? The button. So I got trained two weeks ago um, at the winter um, ice fishing nice for uh, Fishing Games Let's Go Fishing and here I am. He learned how to tie a knot and if, he, if his line breaks, he learned quite a bit of stuff on Tuesday. This is my first year doing this with my classroom, Let's Go Fishing, and the students' reaction, everybody was really excited. Everybody wanted to sign up, and then we got um, about 25 applicants, and we decided for the first year to only take 15 kids just to make sure that we didn't overwhelm ourselves. Um, but the kids were really excited, and I thought it would be difficult because we had to do after-school training um, just because of our scheduling at school, and all the kids were able to come, and nobody, you know, balked at having to be there after school. Um, and they're out here on a freezing cold Saturday fishing and they're really enjoying themselves. I've liked it a lot because I like fishing and I go all the time with my dad. I usually can't recall how to set up a trap, so I think this is that might have imprinted in my brain now. We study ecosystems and predator prey and um, you know um, safety, you know laboratory safety and um, how to be environmentally friendly. There's so. A lot of the stuff that um, we do in this program really does connect to the things they learn in the classroom. I definitely will continue doing this. Um, I'm actually going to get trained in basic fishing in the spring and I'd like to offer a, a spring fishing and I'd like to at least do one day for winter and one day in the spring every year. Bye. Use the hashtag better outside when you share photos and videos showing how you connect with life outdoors. And don't forget to tag New Hampshire Fish and Game on Facebook and Instagram. Snowshoeing is a great investment. It's relatively easy to do and it really just takes time. Snowshoes are relatively inexpensive these days and it's a great way to have a little bit of aerobic workout. It's a great way to keep active in the winter time. You don't need to stay indoors. You need to get outside, strap on your snowshoes and uh, go wherever the adventure is. Like something came along and maybe dug around right there. And that's kind of the neat thing about looking for tracks is you're uncovering stories 
that you wouldn't normally see in the summertime. You know that there's lots of wildlife out in the summertime, all times of the year. But in the winter, they leave tracks, and so you can actually kind of figure out what they've been doing outside. So finding tracks in the snow is a great way to see what kind of wildlife are using the area in the wintertime. But another great resource to find wildlife is to set up a game camera. And that will give you a little snapshot of who's traveling in the area. And you can use the camera in the summertime and the wintertime to see who's out there. So when you're looking for a good spot to set up a game camera, look for a lot of tracks in the area. That indicates that there's a lot of movement in this, in this one spot. I think we might use this tree right here. Just because it's winter time doesn't mean that there's not a lot going out in the woods. It's a perfect time to get on your snowshoes and get outdoors. With over 975 lakes and ponds to play on, it's better outside because we're here connecting you to life outdoors. Now watch this. Hi, I'm Christina Lupi. I'm here today with Dave Gens, who's going to teach me how to ice fish. So, how does this work? You know, really we're going to talk about our modern ice fishing uh, techniques, ice fishing in the 21st century. You know, uh, in the last 30 years, I would say ice fishing has stepped out of the Stone Age into the Space Age. <laughs> and, and these are some of the tools that we use, our electronics, the same thing that we use in our boat in the summertime. As soon as I put this in the water, it tells me how deep the water is. This is, in this is the surface, some ice interference up here with this, and this is, this is the bottom. So I'm on times four, and here's a seven, so four times seven is 28, and this would be 32, so I'm halfway in between, I have about 30 feet of water here. Okay and I'm looking for something in between here, that would be a fish. You know, it looks like there's something move, some moving on the bottom there. Mm -hmm. This happens to have an auto zoom feature, so I'm just gonna zoom in on the bottom six <laughs> feet. Now I'm, I'm reading this side, I'm six, just, see there, see that little flash yep, there by the yep. bottom? There we go, there's some fish there. Okay. You know, I catch all species of fish. You're like, what's my favorite fish to catch? Red lion. <laughs> they don't care what they are. Just give me some red lines down there. What are we using for bait? Well, look at these pretty things. What are those? Well, they're called Euro larvae is what they're called. Sounds delicious. Special way to hook them. Okay. There's a pointed end on them and a flat end. They crawl towards the pointed end. Okay. So you get the flat end up and you just want to hook the end of them here. So I use my finger for a guide and I just want to catch the end of them there. Oh, that's barely on there. Well, then that little bulge there's a clear liquid. You know this is a red one here. Mm -hmm. In that little ball, the liquid will be clear that comes out of it. And that clear liquid is a natural fish attractor. See the fish yep, there? yep, I see it. Okay, now you, okay, now you see the fish is coming up to it now. Ah, so yes. Kind of just feel for a little bite. Okay, now close the bale up and yeah, a little tap. So let me just show you what I what I mean. Sure. It's easy. Constant little jerk like that. Oh. Maybe let me catch one. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> Some little perch, like I said, but. Oh, look, there he is. <laughs> there he is. Your first fish through the ice. <laughs> look what I did. I'm going to follow around here and let her go home and I'll check up. 
going to think more like it's summer out here. In the summer, you wouldn't just throw your anchor out and sit there all day. You'd go trolling around with your boat until you find the fish. And that's what we've done. We've done a series of holes here. I'm going to put make this go at half mass. We're going to be halfway down. Ah, we want to gotcha. sit in the wind. <laughs> These things are great. I see the lines getting closer. Oh. I don't know what it is. Oh! Ah! <laughs> Look at it in! <laughs> oh shoot! <laughs> Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, nice! <laughs> cool. Did it, um, how did it bite? It actually bit pretty hard. I was kind of impressed. I knew it was there compared to the other ones, that's for sure. All right, cool. All right, mister. See you later. Plastics are becoming a bigger and bigger part of ice fishing all the time. You know, this tiny little one here is uh, called a Jamie. When you put these on a hook, you want to just hook them on the end so that it, so it hangs up in the air like this. Now I haven't got it perfect. You got to you got to mess with it a little bit to get it perfect on there. There, so that it sticks straight up in the air, just kind of dangling in the water there. Feels a little bit better. I'm going to pull the transducer out of the hole. There we go. It's a big copy on a, on a simple little white piece of plastic. You know that, that looks like you know some kind of bug. Uh, you know white seems to be the best choice for crappies. I don't know why, but it seems like if I'm catching crappies, I'm catching them on white. I just finished my first day of ice fishing with Dave Gens over here. Thanks so much, Dave. I had a great time and I learned a lot. Well, you certainly had a great day out here on the ice. I wouldn't believe this was your first time ice fishing, but <laughs> you, you know, you did well and you caught the big fish of the day. Well, thank you so much. Okay, great. I hope we get to do it again. I hope so too. We hope you enjoyed this episode of New Hampshire's Wild Side. Be sure to check back for new content at nhwildside.com. I'm Mark Beauchene. And I'm Christina Lupi. Thanks for watching.